Okay, good morning class. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is clinical assessment and diagnosis. Uh, some of this information I covered in class last week, um, so bear with me if I'm repeating myself. So a clinical assessment, the purpose is mainly to clarify diagnosis and provide a roadmap for treatment. I mentioned in class how the diagnosis is so important um, because it drives treatment and that's why getting an accurate diagnosis is is really really important um, especially since it's a label that's going to stay with that person for the rest of their life so um, a, a good step in in obtaining um, um, an accurate diagnosis is doing a psychological assessment Okay, some of the psychological tests we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about a few psychological tests. Um, one thing they all have in common is that they stand uh, uh, stand the test of of, of rigor, meaning uh, they're reliable, they're valid, and they've been standardized. Uh, there has to be a high standard for for psychological tests, and all of these tests meet that standard. The most important assessment tool. Um, is the clinical interview. So we're going to talk about some psych tests and, and those tests give you a lot of information but the most important assessment tool is the clinical interview. This is basically a snapshot of the individual's life. Um, the clinical interview can be structured meaning the questions are already written out for you. You can purchase these. Um, the problem with the structure format it doesn't allow for much flexibility. Uh, you could go completely unstructured um, where you just have a conversation and just ask questions from the top of your head. The problem with that is that you may forget certain if pieces of information that you need. Um, I found that the best method for myself is the semi-structured where the domains are written down uh, but not the specific questions so you know what areas you want to cover and then the questions are more fluid and flexible. Um, there is no bad way. Uh, you just have to fit or find the the format that's best for you. Uh, most beginning therapists like the structure format because the questions are already provided for them. First thing you do with the clinical interview is a mental status exam, also known as a mini mental status exam. And there's a couple areas you're going to cover, but basically with the with the uh, exam you're getting um, sort of an overview of the individual's cognitive abilities. Um, the first area you might want to look at is their appearance. Are they dressed appropriately for counseling? Um, is their behavior appropriate for the setting? Uh, their thought process, do they tend to think in a clear, logical fashion? Um, which means basically they're thinking linearly, one thought after another. Or do they tend to think very circular, with their thoughts all over the place? Um, their mood and their affect. Mood refers to how they've been feeling for the last few days. Affect refers to their emotional state at that moment uh, that you see them. Most times the mood and affect match. So the person's been feeling depressed for quite a few weeks, and when you see them, they look depressed. But also the mood and affect can be different. Uh, for example, a person could be feeling depressed for several days, but when they see you, they're so happy to talk to someone that their mood is, is normal. And so um, you want to note that if their mood and their affect are congruent or discongruent. Um, and, and that could be important information. Okay, their intellectual function. Most of this you're going to get from just doing the evaluation. Um, some people, um, you could tell from talking about academic history that they're uh, intellectually at a particular level. Um, you could ask specific questions that uh, point to their intellectual abilities. Um, but this is typically something that you gain um, or gain knowledge of by talking to them. Um, sensorium refers to are they alert and oriented to person, place, and time. Person means they know who they are. P 
place? Do they know where they are? And time, do they know the date or the year? So are they alert and oriented to person, place, or time? And then a physical exam. Now, you're not going to be doing physical exams unless you want to get sued. Um, but if they haven't had a physical, you want to refer them to their physician to get that done. Domains. Most of these we covered in class, so I'm not going to go over the ones we've already covered. Um, sexual history, you definitely want that. As I mentioned, there's a lot of intertwining between sex and violence. So forensic evaluations, you definitely want to know about their sexual fantasy. Um, but this also can include any sexual abuse or molestation in their past. Um, you want to know what medications they're on. Sometimes what you're seeing is not so much a mental illness or a psychological disorder, but the effects of medications they might be on for physical issues. Hospitalizations, you want to know if they've been hospitalized and where. Do they have any legal problems that you need to be aware of? And um, have they been in the military? And if so, what was their experience like? Uh, that This kind of gives you some indication of how they respond to stress. Now, when you're making a diagnosis, it's really important to rule out any medical problems or substance use because those two things can muddy the waters somewhat. Uh, both of those things could cause someone to look like they have a mental illness, but they really don't. So, uh, for example, they could have thyroid problems and make them look depressed or manic. Um, they may be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. So you want to always rule those two things out first. And this is, again, looking at the mental status exam, which we've talked about. Uh, behavioral assessment. Basically, you want to know, are there any behaviors that have been causing them problems? Um, you want to note what those behaviors are. You want to note the antecedents or what causes those behaviors or, or what comes before those behaviors. You want to talk about the behaviors themselves. And then what happens as a result of those behaviors? What are the consequences? And the next slide illustrates that as well. You want to know the antecedents, the behavior, and then the consequences of those behaviors. The ABCs of observation. Okay, let's talk about psychological tests. Um, as I mentioned, they need to be reliable, they need to be valid, they need to be standardized. These are not tests that you find on Facebook or, um, you know, get your IQ in five minutes. Um, these tests have, um, are very rigorous, and like I said, they stand the test of time. So when we do, when I do a clinical assessment, I am taking probably two or three tests from each area. So when I do a battery of tests, I'm, um, you know, it's I'm, I'm taking several hours to complete the evaluation. So the first area are projective tests. Now most tests are a-theoretical, meaning that they don't ascribe to any theoretical orientation. There are some exceptions to that. One exception are the projective tests. They tend to follow a psychodynamic point of view. And so basically the psychodynamic view of abnormal behavior is that adolescent or adult uh, uh, psychological problems are caused by uh, trauma in childhood. That trauma gets covered up and repressed and it results in abnormal behavior. So the treatment involves trying to uncover that unconscious material. One way to do that is that you present someone with ambiguous stimuli and then how they respond to that stimuli is material coming from their unconscious. And so that's what the projective tests all have in common, that you're presenting ambiguous stimuli that then they, um, um, it brings up certain feelings and emotions, and the theory goes that those feelings and emotions come from their unconscious. Uh, the, probably the most famous of these tests is the Rorschach psychodiagnostic test. Basically, you're presenting a person with ink blots and they are to tell you everything that they see. You write it all down and then you score interpret it. Now the Rorschach for decades didn't have a, 
um, standardized scoring system and so people would just score it any way they wanted to. That caused a lot of problems in terms of the Rorschach not uh, being allowed in court. Uh, a test being allowed in a court is the highest standard. Um, John Exner, E-X-N-E-R, in the 80s developed a comprehensive scoring system for the Rorschach. Very complex, um, but it works really, really well. I use the Rorschach a lot, and you get a lot of information from it. Coping uh, deficits, whether a person's schizophrenic, depressed, suicidal, homicidal, um, what's the level of psychological resources they have. You get a lot of information for the Rorschach. And because of Exner's scoring system, it is now allowed in court. You can use it and testify to the findings in court. Another projective test is the thematic apperception test, where basically you present someone with pictures, black and white pictures, and these are, I'm sorry, they're drawings, and they need to tell you a story based on what they see in the drawings. Uh, the story has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and they have to tell you what each of the characters is thinking and feeling. And then based on that, you're looking for certain themes. So the next two slides kind of get, these are not exact Rorschach cards, but this is kind of what you, kind of what it looks like. So basically the person looks at this, and then they tell you everything they see in the card. And this is not a good representation of the thematic apperception test, because the test is actually in black and white. Uh, and it shows a particular scene. Um, and so again, they have to tell you a story based on what they see. Other objective tests are personality tests. And these tests are really valuable in getting you a snapshot of the individual's personality. Now, there's three tests that are commonly used, the MMPI, the Milan multiaxial clinical, or I'm sorry, the, the Milan clinical multiaxial inventory, or the MCMI, and then the PAI. So we're going to talk about um, each of these personality tests.